Today I'm looking at the Flash Fish A101, a 98 watt hour portable power generator. This is a small power station with, it has one 120 volt outlet here on the side for AC power as you can see, capable of delivering 100 watts as well as USB A and C ports and 12 volt in and out ports. I'll also be looking at their 50 watt solar panel set here, which I'll show you in a little bit. Here is the manual photo to that. Thanks to Flashfish for sending this to me to take a look at and review. So I'll insert pictures here of the packaging and accessories. It's a brown cardboard box with black printing on the exterior and a decent amount of data on it. Inside the unit is protected with large pieces of rigid styrofoam and accessories include the AC power adapter, that I have here. Pretty generic unit. It is capable of 12 volts, 2 amps, and just uses a barrel connector. It comes with a lanyard here with a split ring that connects here, which I'll probably be doing after the review. It just makes it a little bit easier to hold. You also get a car adapter for out, so you can run your car accessories with the power bank itself. And then you get a car charger itself. Uh, one thing to note here is there's a lot of adapters with this. It looks like it's a lot of generic parts that are put together to fit this unit here. For the solar panels, they're in a separate, they're a separate product. They came in a nondescript cardboard box. They came with a one meter charging cable and a envelope full of tip accessories. So let's talk about the physical design here and construction. The size is about six by six and about four inches wide. The weight is 2.65 pounds, and it's an orange and gray plastic component here. There's no handle, as I mentioned before, but there's a place for your lanyard your adapter. On the uh, right-hand side, there is a fan for when it's in AC mode. On the back, this is a flashlight of sorts, almost a lantern. It does illuminate in white only and nice diffused light, but it is cool white. And on the left-hand side, as you saw here, is the AC adapter. On the bottom, you do have a sticker showing you the capacity and everything. It's rated at 98 watt hours, about 2,600 milliamp hours, I believe, if I remember correctly. It can output 110 volts, 120 watts, um, but more like 100 watts. Uh, so this, this power... This placard doesn't really match their manual or what they say on the website. That's a little confusing. DC input of 12 volts, 2 amps. You can do DC output, or you can output in, uh, or in it's capable of 5 volts, 2.4 amps, 9 volts, 2.4 amps, and 12 volts, 1.5 amps. And DC 12 volts in, 10 amp max is the charging method. On the front, you do have a screen here. It's small. It's not the easiest read. I don't know if that's showing up on video here, but it just says 70% right now because I hit the on button. You have to hold it here for about three seconds, I believe, and you'll get AC out, turns on. It automatically turns on the fan here and a green LED inside there, and it'll stay like this. And it's ready positioned to plug in something on this side here. We can plug in the uh, power adapter. So I can show you if that fits, no problem. Obviously, you can't charge itself. You push that power button again to activate the USB ports and DC out, and you press and hold again to turn it off. The flashlight here up on top is activated with this uh, big button there. It takes about three seconds to turn on, and you can see there it is. It's not the brightest, and I'll talk more about that here in a minute. I do wish the screen told you like an estimated runtime or how many watts you were pulling at that time. All it does is give the battery percentage. The LED on the back, as I mentioned before, is a lantern. It produces about 173 lumens, which didn't fit in my lumen tube completely. So I'd guess it's more like about 200 lumens or so. Total runtime on the full internal battery was nine hours and 14 minutes, completely flat, no um, output sag at all. There was also an SOS mode on there, but there's no red or anything like that. So let's talk about the performance here. There are multiple output methods with the Flashfish A101, mainly USB-A and USB-C and then 12 volt out. Uh, USB-A on this unit is capable of following profiles. I'll insert a photo of the test here to not bore you with all the exact things. I used my CT3 meter and USB-C. I also did it. It had a few different differences, but overall more support than I was expecting for different charging voltages and capabilities. This unit is not capable of USB-C PD over 27 watts, so don't expect it to directly power a laptop via USB-C. However, you can use your AC adapter and use the 
AC port to power a laptop. I tested discharge here from 100% to 0% runtime using ASB, USB A load and got uh, 15,849.6 milliamp hours of usable power. This took five hours, 47 minutes with a load of two and a half amps, five volts. Internally, the unit claims it has a 2600, 400 milliamp hour battery storage. That's about 66% of rated capacity. And it's normal to expect some losses here depending on how things are calculated and just normal conversion losses. But to me, this doesn't seem like it's the most efficient electronics. I also tested using a 120 watt DC to AC converter here to charge my Canon battery for my camera. And you know that's a pretty inefficient process because power is going from DC in the battery in this unit to AC on the side of this unit and then the power the charger for the battery itself is taking the AC power converting it back to DC to store it in the battery. Use it with a full battery on the uh, flash fish here and it charged the 2700 milliamp hour cannon battery and it dropped the flash fish down to 75%. It's good if you need it but if you don't need it or have the ability to charge DC directly you're going to get better run times and better outputs. AC power here is capable up to 100 watts maximum. Different places in the unit says 120 watts. That 100 watts includes bursts of power when motors start up and things like that. It is not a full sine wave. I tried to run a portable ice maker here, which uses 103 watts when it's normally, but it needs like 250 watts when it starts up the compressor, and this just couldn't do it. The AC power here is not true sine wave, but in instead it's a sawtooth, and this isn't surprising given the price point here, but it means it's not a deal for electronics and some motors may not care for this. I hooked up a tower fan and used it while I work and the motor sounds kind of weird. You can tell something wasn't right. I don't believe this does damage to the fan motor, but it's not designed for it. And it could be issues with the speed control as well. I also did a smaller desk fan and that didn't seem to care. Ran the small fan for 2.5 hours and it discharged the battery from 100 to 50%. And while you're in AC mode, you can use the USB modes as well. For recharging in the box, there is the AC adapter, as I mentioned, just a uh, generic wall wart and it works. It's okay. Outputs 12 volts, two amps, and that's the only way to charge the unit is DC in. As I mentioned before, there's no USB-C input which is disappointing. Uh, via AC power, I went from zero to 100% charge in four and a half hours. And as I mentioned, during recharging, the USB ports work as well, but the AC outlet will not work. Included in the box is that uh, car adapter, is what I'm gonna call it. It's a 12 volt cigarette adapter. I did not try this, but assume it's gonna charge at a similar rate just due to uh, the specs of the unit itself. Flash Fish also sent their 50 watt solar panels here and I'll insert pictures. Here is the manual that comes with it. They're just too big to fit in the frame and I've got some video of running them here in a minute. And these were really exciting to me. Um, I just think solar power is kind of neat, especially in this application. I think it can do a lot. We see places like Puerto Rico and Florida this week gonna get hit with a hurricane. Solar panels combined with the solar generator storage system is awesome. And that's what uh, I think the solar panels just are, are neat for me. These are the most powerful Powerful solar panels I have and they measure 17 inches by 16 when folded and 34 by 16 when unfolded. They have a nylon uh, outer protection to them and they come with handles for easy storage. On the inside there's a pocket to store your cables and things like that and then that's where the inverter is. The inverter has three ports. It has a USB-A capable of five volts, two amp, USB-A capable of quick charge 3.0, but it's unclear exactly the power specs of this. And it of course depends on the solar conditions that you're dealing with. The inverter also has a DC jack on it as well. And it allows you to fit various adapters to fit into different devices. They aren't specifically designed while they work with the flash fish here that I have, they aren't tied to it. You get a number of adapter tips so you can charge and cook up to other things. Okay, I've got the solar panels out. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon. The sun is behind me as you can kind of see my hand here. So not ideal solar conditions, but not terrible either. I wanted to cook up my multimeter and show you what the voltage is. So I'm connected here. It's getting about 21.1 volts at this time. If I step into the shadow, you can see that'll drop some you know, 20.52. So a decent amount of power here. And I've switched to amps mode here just to kind of show you the amount of amps at the same voltage it's running at. So about 0.4 amps of power. Obviously under better conditions, the solar panels will make more electricity, but I thought this was a kind of a way to show you roughly what it's doing on a typical day in the fall in my part of the world. One other thing to note here, 
This is the conversion box, and you can see it's got DC out, USB, and then USB C uh, or USB quick charge. And it's a pretty small box. It's inside this pouch here, and this is where you can store the wires that comes with it, the solar panels, which is kind of nice there. I wish it was a little bit better seal here. I'd be a little bit worried about losing wires out of the material. The controller electronics are designed so that you can use the USB-C ports and 18 volts DC if desired to charge something. I did a decent amount of solar charging with the unit because I was really interested in the different results and conditions. I charged from 0 to 100% in only about 4 hours during a very sunny day from about uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the middle of August without a cloud in the sky. Perfect time for solar. I did the same thing in a partially cloudy sky here across a seven hour window and it only charged to 78 percent so the amount of sun you get and the angle are really going to make a difference in the amount of power you're able to generate and then store inside a battery i charged my sofren lt1 with the solar panels as well and it did good there as you know the lt1 isn't the fastest charging light for how big of uh, batteries it has inside or how many i guess i should say and that took a good six seven hours to charge basically the same speed as it does via usb c because it was running over usb and not capable of higher power usb c to c it charged at your normal 5 volts, 2 amps, and that's uh, the speed you got. And said no problem delivering that. My final thoughts are this is an interesting product. While it works as advertised, it has a number of areas for improvement, in my opinion. Um, first would be that the ability to charge via USB-C to C so that you don't have to use a 12-volt adapter or a car charger or something like that. High wattage USB-C charging is becoming the norm for many electronics and laptops and things like that. And if you're going to travel with it, that's just one less charger to carry. The other thing is that it uses not a non-pure sine wave for AC power. Again, this is probably a price point issue, and both issues are something that they have fixed on their larger, more expensive units. I think the target market here is interesting. This is pretty small and portable, but it's not the smallest out there. 100 watts of AC power really isn't a lot, I, and it has limits to what it can power. I suppose if you were camping or something, a small fan, radio, or lighting solution would work here, or to charge a laptop or other electronics, like a small medical device or something, but 100 watts isn't a lot of power. And if you're charging things like batteries, there's a fair amount of loss when you're going from the, the DC of the batteries to the AC of the inverter to your normal AC wall charger back to DC to charge your batteries. Just not the best way to do it. If you can charge via USB or 12 volt, you're going to get better efficiency. I think if you wanted just a USB power source, especially USB-C, there are probably better battery banks that are going to have smaller physical size and pack more power. This is a this is a bigger box and you could fit a lot more batteries inside here if you didn't have the inverter or something like that. So that's something to keep in mind if size and weight are your biggest concerns and you didn't need the AC power. I love the solar panels here. They can be used to charge any 12 volt power source, which is where you're going to get the best performance. I was surprised in the full sun, I was able to uh, charge the power bank at nearly the same speed as AC power did. And USB-C here worked well. As I said, I charged my Sofren LT1 and that worked no problem. But the uh, issue was it just couldn't use all the power that the solar panels were generating at that time. I think solar panels are a must if you plan to be without AC power for days and need to recharge multiple uh, electronics soon. If I lived in a hurricane prone area, I would definitely have a solar solution, power solution and something like this to store power. I live in tornado country and it's still a good idea to have. We get blizzards too. I don't think uh, you'd have as much, nearly as much success though in the winter charging something as you would in the summer. That said, you could power a lot of smartphones and tablets and flashlights with the combo of the uh, this portable power generator using USB and the solar panels that I got extra, as long as size and weight were not too restrictive for you. As a former Boy Scout, there were numerous trips I wish I would have had something like this back in the day before everybody had electronics and high quality LED flashlights like they do today. It just would have been nice to be able to charge stuff, have normal chargers, and always have power available when you needed it. As always, guys, let me know what you think of the Flashfish A101. Do you have a power bank like this? Have you tried out solar panel? Let me know what you guys think. As always, if I have any coupons or anything like that, I'll have post those in the description. And if you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.